ABC. Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. A great day to you and welcome to another edition of My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, along with Nassau Community College student, Zach Turkel. Our special guest today is Lee Williams, owner of a new indoor cycling studio called Cycle Bar, located in Garden City. At over 130 studios and counting, Cycle Bar is the largest indoor cycling studio in the world. Yet the new Garden City location is the first of its kind in New York. Lee is originally from England. He arrived in the U.S. in 1995 with a plan. He was either going to become a professional soccer player or a businessman. Fast forward 20 plus years and he finds himself launching New York's first cycle bar. Lee, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Bill. Lee, uh, before we go too far, fill in some of the gaps. Uh, When you came from England, what brought you to the U.S. originally? Because that's some plan. Either you're going to be an entrepreneur or a soccer player. I guess it's it's important to know that, that my first ever job, Bill, was as a soccer player. 16 years old, my full-time profession was literally kicking a ball. Um, I had to, I, I actually played for a professional soccer team in England, uh, so it was a great, great learning experience. Um, I was there for two to three years. At the end of my contract, I wasn't offered a new one. It was crushing for a, uh, for a youngster. And I decided at that point in time that I really wanted to pursue an education and ensure that that I'd never put myself in a position where anyone could take my career away from me. That's a great story. And also for young people to realize that it could be a slight injury. It could be a coach who just doesn't need your skills or wants to pursue it in a different way. Uh, But it all depends on that. And in a moment, as you've experienced, that the athletic career can go by the by and... uh, you have to look for a new world. So it wasn't it wasn't the end, um, but you know certainly it was a harsh lesson for for a very young um, young man. It was at that time, however, that I, that I received a phone call. It was from a coach over here in the U.S. who offered me the opportunity to come to university in the U.S. Um, you know, I jumped on that opportunity. However, I wasn't sitting there like your average student. I wasn't going through a catalog. I wasn't looking at a lot of schools. I had one option, and I had to make a decision within a week. <laughs> um, so I made that decision, and the decision was to uh, to leave Liverpool, England, where I'm originally from, and uh, and try this new journey in the uh, in the U.S. You know, I guess the the other thing that's important is that at that point in time, uh, the, uh, the the World Cup of Soccer was actually happening in the U.S. and the the professional soccer league that you have over here called the MLS was just getting off the ground. So my plan was either I was going to make it in business or I was going to make it in soccer, but it was going to be one of the two. Zach? That's amazing. So, Lee, how was it as a foreign student in upstate New York? What were you expecting and how did the experience match up? Because I'm pretty sure it was a little odd when you first came here and going to school here. It was um, it was certainly a culture shock. You know, you, um, you tend to think that both England and America are so culturally similar that it's going to be just like going to another town. Well, it mm-hmm. wasn't. Um, upstate New York, very, very different. You know, I come from humble beginnings and, and we didn't travel very much as a family. So, so when I came to America, it was my very first time. The only thing I'd ever seen of America, frankly, was watching Beverly Hills 90210 on TV. <laughs> and Syracuse, New York is no Beverly Hills. That's, that's true. Now, Lee, I, I just have to tell you, though, do other people find it as interesting? And I think Zach would say the same thing. When you speak, it just sounds so authoritative. And you could tell me sweep the sidewalk, but I would feel that the word came from God. God told you, and, and I'm going to sweep the sidewalk because Lee says sweep the sidewalk. Didn't other people in the college, especially upstate, where they probably don't hear this too much, really enjoy your accent? <laughs> so, first of all, I guess that was a compliment. Thank it you. Was, that, yes, that, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Thank, so. thank you, Bill. Um, <laughs> you know, when I first came over, I, I, uh, I I used a lot of slang in in my speech, and I probably swore way too much, frankly. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And and combine that with the fast pace at which we speak in uh, in Liverpool, England, a lot of people didn't understand what I was saying. Frankly, people smiled and nodded and laughed, and I thought they understood me. 
and they didn't. So I really, I was on a, I was on an island from a, a communication perspective, and I really needed to slow down, speak more clearly, and um, and that ultimately helped. Now you came over, if I remember, with an idea of two paths: the professional sports and your college. When did you decide which way, which path you're going to take and stick to it? So that that's a really interesting question. Um, so I, I was in I was in my undergraduate school. I was first team All American in my junior year. So I had the win at my sales and everything was going great. Then hit the preseason of my senior year and I was I was fouled in a game and broke my clavicle, my my collarbone, and it was a season ending injury. But I still had one year of eligibility. Now, over here in the US, we have this awesome concept of red shirting. So I my school still paid my tuition and I had one year of eligibility left. So um that meant that schools began to recruit me to play soccer for them for one year in exchange for paying for my MBA. So I was in a very fortunate position. Um, so what I did was I prolonged my stay in the U.S. and I, I began my my graduate school. So it was at that point in time, it was around 1999, that I was I was drafted to play into the in the MLS. So you know one part of that plan it was absolutely coming true um i guess the other part was coming true in terms of business school but but i really had a decision to make because if i was going to go into the mls at that point in time then i was going to be foregoing my my scholarship um as a result i decided to stay in school finish my mba get the get the degree behind me and then make a decision from that point in time and i guess that was really the uh the moment the tipping point for me Sounds like a good move. Definitely does. Lee, ultimately, it sounds like you traded your passion for sports with your passion for business. Why was that? I mean, you you were in the MLS. Well, how, how long were you in the MLS for? So I didn't actually um, jump into the MLS, uh, okay. Zach. I, I had the opportunity to and decided not to. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that. You know, I jumped straight into business, and I was very fortunate to be recruited by, you know, one of the top companies in the world. Certainly at the time, General Electric. Um, they drafted me in to uh, to to go into the um, leadership program. Uh, frankly, it was one of the best leadership programs for graduate students in the world. So I was humbled to be offered the opportunity, and I, I jumped on it. Yeah. Now, Lee. Um we should tell people that we've been talking to you, obviously, for a few minutes, but you are the owner and operator of Cycle Bar in Garden City. And if someone's hearing this and would like to visit Cycle Bar, where is that? Oh, um, thanks. Thanks a lot, Bill. Uh, Cycle Bar, yes, we are located on 950 Franklin Avenue, which, if you're familiar with Garden City, is you right, know Franklin Avenue, right, right between 9th and 10th Street. And uh, I guess what I'd add is that anyone can come and your first ride is always free. All right. I better get on some bicycles, Bill. I think so. I think you should too, Bill. Yeah, I, <laughs> Definitely. I like. knew you'd get me back to that. <laughs> but we, we could all use it, and here we go. There's no such thing as a free lunch, but you do get a free ride, right? Yes. So that that's a good deal. Now, what was your first job out of school here? Um, it was going into that leadership program over at General Electric. It was tremendous. We uh, it was for graduate students and above, um, and the top like one to two percentile of the the other postgraduate um, uh, programs that they offered. So it was really prestigious. We got to try. I got to travel all over the world. So from going. From being a young man who hadn't left the country practically to being in the U.S. and now I'm in Singapore, Japan, Australia, all over Europe, and so on and so forth, it was uh, it was a tremendous learning experience for me. And Lee, we have many students here at Nassau Community College about to graduate and embark on their own journey. And what was it like for you? And what would you say to those college students that are coming here? Honestly. Um, Find the right company and take any job you can. It mm-hmm. doesn't. Re- it doesn't really matter where you start. It just matters that you get in the company that you want to be in. Then, where you went to school, what degree you have, what GPA you had, doesn't make a difference. You're in the door at that moment in time. Just work your tail off and show everyone around you that you want it more than anybody else. And that's how you that's how you get moving through an organization. We see that Lee is a very smart man with the mm-hmm. advice he's giving us. And we've had that from our guests in, on the success show. And I think if everybody just follows what you're saying, and you make it sound so simple, but it's a lot of hard work, but uh, they're going to have a successful career and do pretty well for themselves. 
Now, Lee, in, in 2007, uh, we were all facing the global financial crisis. We kind of forget about that now. And uh, you were moved to London to build out financing capabilities. Was that like uh, sending you to the end of the cliff and saying, uh, don't jump? <laughs> um, honestly, at the time, you know, we knew something was going on, Bill, but we didn't really, you know, have our hands around the scale of what was about to come. So me and my family went on this amazing venture out in London. Uh, it was, you know, it was, it was an incredible opportunity for us. Um, here, it, it was interesting. Here, stateside, you know, um, we started to see that the penny drop, so to speak. However, over in Europe, it was almost like everyone had their fingers in their ears and they were saying, la, 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 pretending that this wasn't, the tsunami was not fast approaching. Um, so it was an incredible vantage point from which to view the global financial crisis. But, um, but being over there from 2007 through 2000 and, uh, 10 um it was it was fascinating we had we built up a huge team and then we downscaled that team dramatically and all of the emotions that uh, that would go with that were um were certainly experienced a lot of life lessons but not so much fun at the time when you're learning them um that's true that's <laughs> true but you know if um if everything was easy we'd never learn and we'd never grow great attitude so lee you made it back to the u.s in 2010 like you mentioned earlier and somehow you ended up financing real estate and franchises, amongst other things. And what was that like, and how did you position you to bring Cycle Bar to New York? That sounds uh, very interesting. So going from real estate to creating a Cycle Bar, that's uh, how did you create that? So I, so I then started working for a fund which was headquartered out of Abu Dhabi, which was an incredible cultural learning for me, um, frankly, but, and, and working really crazy hours. And, and that, this particular fund had a lot of money to invest, and they wanted to invest it in a lot of different asset classes. So it just so happens that I then really learned a lot about real estate. I learned a lot about franchises and franchise financing and M&A transactions and so on and so forth. So it was a, it was all wonderful. Um, and what I didn't realize at the time was that that was really just a, a stepping stone um, into this venture that I'm now undertaking. Cycle Bar, if I didn't mention it earlier, is in fact a franchise. And, and it's a bricks and mortar um, franchise. We have a physical location. So knowing your way around a lease is kind of important. Um, <laughs> knowing that location is everything is fundamentally critical. Um, and understanding how franchises you know, operate and live and breathe really helped um, help me move in, into this direction. Now, as I kidded you before the show, when I first heard Cycle Bar, I wasn't sure if it was a restaurant type bar we have drinks and hamburgers, or if it was an exercise. This is an exercise facility, correct? Absolutely, Bill. So this is the this is premium indoor cycling. So it is it is we do one thing, but we do it exceptionally well. So you ride on a stationary bike to to heart pumping music. Uh, the ride itself is exhilarating and a incredible incredible workout. Um, our classes are typically forty five minutes. Uh, we do some others as well, but we incorporate a lot of different things. So we bring in DJs. We get that party started. We do dual rides where we'll have two instructors instruct instead of one. We actually had a, a vocal artist um, join us just a few days ago, and she's it was incredible. So we do lots of different things to make people almost forget that they're working out. And the word bar in cycle bar, it, it's supposed to it's supposed to elicit thoughts of community. It's the local hangout. So we say to our customers, we'll meet you at the bar. And that's exactly what we mean. Kind of like Starbucks for exercises, seriously. I mean, is that it? That it's a community also. It's not just go in and sweat and get out. Yeah, just the way your local Starbucks will want to be on Main Street. It will want to be, you know, Main and Main, the, the hub of the community. That's exactly what Boutique Fitness is all about. It's about putting putting that one aspect of a big box gym proximate to where its customers are and where its customers' lifestyles are. Lee, you're getting me really excited here. Now, I'm... <laughs> I, lo I, him I love my chicken fingers, and if <laughs> I can go on a stationary bike and listening to this kind of music, and, and he wants to eat, can you like eat that. chicken fingers on the bike? Is that allowed? <laughs> or is there no eating Oof, policy? It's the judgment-free zone. But Judge go ahead, judgment. Yeah. You got it. All right, you like that? Yay! I'm happy about that. <laughs> now, Lee, um, at this point, we want to find out more about Cycle Bar, but I have to say that um, friends who have been in, involved with the cycling indoor and as an exercise, they seem to love it. 
So the people I know, not all that many, as you can see from my figure and Zach's figure, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the ones. 